Tonight, social studies teacher Diana Volatich is suspended from this Florida middle school after it was revealed she secretly hosted a podcast embracing white supremacist ideas. So many other researchers have already looked into this, and that's just the way it is. There are, there are races that have higher IQs. First reported in the Huffington Post, 25-year-old Volatich used a pseudonym, Tiana Dolikoff, often discussing what she sees as the failings of the education system on her podcast called Unapologetic. Meredith Blakely's daughter is in Volatich's class. They were talking about segregation in a civil rights uh, type of capacity, and the teacher somewhat alluded that segregation might possibly be okay. In her podcast, Volatich says the principal asked her about sharing political bias with students. The principal came to me and she was like, I'm not worried. Should I be worried? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and she believed me and she backed off. In a statement from her lawyer, Volatich denies being a white nationalist and promoting her political beliefs in class. Adding about her podcast, I employed political satire and exaggeration, mainly to the end of attracting listeners and followers. Is this a freedom of speech issue? Saying things like segregation against African Americans during, Jim, during the Jim Crow era uh, was okay, that's not okay. So again, it's a public education issue. The school district is investigating. Volatich could lose her teaching license altogether. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Ron Logan and today, we got to talk about this teacher who got fired from her job due to some online people basically snitching on her because of her podcast. Now, <laughs> this is kind of a controversial thing, but we're going to get into this article and see what she was talking about in the podcast. Uh, she had a Twitter and that's been deleted, so I can't go back to the Twitter. But you saw the video before I started talking and they got into some of what was said, but we're going to get into more. And you see the headline right over my left hand shoulder exclusive Florida public school teacher has a white nationalist podcast. Now, I've not heard this podcast before, but from what I've been able to hear in that video we saw before I started talking and what I've just skimmed through in this article, that's not really what it is. She's just like your typical kind of a little bit beyond sending the right person on Twitter. That's basically what this was. And for that, she got fired. Put it to you like this. If it was a black person saying that, let's say it was me and I was a teacher and I said the same thing she said about black folks, then it, it would be nothing. It'd be totally innocuous but because she's white. It's an issue. But we're going to get into it to see what she says. Um, her name is Diana Volotic and the subhead under the headline says she suggests Muslims be eradicated from the earth, believes anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and teaches middle school social studies. Now, I'm almost 100% certain because we are on Huffington Post. I'm almost 100% certain that's a exaggeration. It's not really telling the full truth, but we're gonna get down to the bottom of it. Okay, now I uh, have an update on this. It says that she got removed from the classroom. So I'm not sure what that means. Did she get fired? Did she get reassigned? I'm not really sure. Cause you got teachers unions, it's kind of hard to fire some people sometimes depending upon what happens and depending upon the state, I suppose. On Friday, March 2nd, 2018, the Centrus County School District was made aware by a HuffPost reporter of a concerning podcast. Himmel said in a statement, the Human Resources Department was notified an investigation was initiated immediately. The teacher has been removed from the classroom. An investigation is ongoing. So I guess until the investigation completes, she won't be in the classroom. She'll be at home still getting paid, but she won't be able to teach students. And that's her right there again. She's like a nice lady, but we're going to see what's really going on. And her uh, pseudonym was Tiana Dalachov. And that Twitter, like I said, is gone. Now, here's the original article. Diana Volutich, a 25-year-old social studies teacher at Crystal River Middle School in Florida, has been secretly hosting the white nationalist podcast Unapologetic under the pseudonym Tiana Dalachov and bragging about teaching her views in the public school HuffPost has discovered. In their most recent podcast, February 26, a guest railed against diversity in schools, dismissing the idea that, quote, a kid from Nigeria and a kid who came from Sweden are supposed to learn exactly the same and have the same IQ. Well, let's stop right there. Everybody knows that if you come from Sweden versus Nigeria, you're going to be different. It's different countries. It's very far away. Different cultures, different regions. It's not the same. 
So to say that is factually correct. And also about the IQ, you could look at the IQ on average. Sub-Saharan Africans have different IQ than whites and whites are different than Asians. And it goes in that order. Asians, whites, Sub-Saharan Africans. It is what it is. It doesn't mean that just because you're black, your IQ will be low. Or if you're Asian, your IQ will be high. It just means on average, the IQs are going to be different. Now, we can get into the reasons why. That can be a debate. But the numbers are what they are, and it can't really be disproven. Some may say that IQ is not really important, but it is what it is. But let's continue. Volunteers enthusiastically agreed with the guests and went on to argue that, quote, science, unquote, has proven that certain races are smarter than others. Now, I want to hear what she actually said. If anybody has this podcast, let me see it. I've not been able to find it. I haven't looking that long. Of course, I just did this video right now. But if you have that podcast, let me get a listen and then I'll maybe do a follow up on this. In the same episode, Volotich boasted about bringing her white nationalist beliefs into the classroom and hiding her ideology from administrators. She said that when parents complain to the school's principal about how she is injecting political bias into the classroom, Volotich lied to the principal and said it was not true. Quote, she believed me and backed off, she said. Volotich also agreed that her guest assertion that more white supremacists need to infiltrate public schools and become teachers. They don't have to be vocal about their views, but get in there, her guest said. Be more covert and just start taking over those places. Let's back up a little bit here where she was talking about hiding her ideology, uh, white nationalist beliefs. See, I feel like Huffington Post is assigning a certain thing to her without her saying that herself. You can have certain political views and not necessarily label it. Huffington Post, I feel like it's labeling what she is. She said that she wants to have the other side be heard. So does it mean that the other side has to be white supremacists or white nationalists? Or can it just be an opposing viewpoint from the liberal rhetoric that we hear all the time? See, they're assigning like if you if you happen to not be a liberal, if you're not on the left, then you must be a white supremacist or racist or whatever. That's pretty much what I'm getting from this article. But then again, I've not heard the particular thing in question that they're referring to. They're not like posting the snippet of audio and describing it right here in this article. But I think I'm right. After HuffPost made inquiries about Volotich's white nationalism to the Citrus County School District on Friday, Tiana Dolachov tweeted that, quote, she might disappear for a while, unquote, and then send her account to private. She also scrubbed the website for her podcast. Huffington Post took screenshots of many other racist and incendiary statements she made online. Now, here we go. Let's get down to the brass tacks. Let's get down to the meat and potatoes of the whole situation. It isn't supremacist or hateful to prefer your own people over others. Where is it racist? If I was to say that, that wouldn't be racist. And in reality, it's not something you could consider racist. Because look, most people in the USA, and other countries, that's different. I mean, actually, in other countries, probably even more so what I'm about to say. But in the USA, people typically marry within their own race at about a 90 to 95 percent rate. It doesn't matter what race you are. If you're Asian, Hispanic, black, white, it doesn't matter. Everybody pretty much marries with each other. They pretty much stay amongst each other as far as where they live, where they go to school, where they hang out. You can go to a place and it's like segregated by ethnicity, country of origin, or just simply race, black, white, whatever, like in Virginia Beach. If you're from Hampton Roads, you know what I'm about to say is true. You go to Virginia Beach, a certain part of town where it's pretty much just like China. <laughs> it's Asia. Like right there on Lane Haven, on the corner of Lane from Princess Anne, it, it's all Asia right there. You got a Filipino stores. You got like three Filipino food stores right there. You got a Thai spot. You got a Chinese food spot. And then you go to that Walmart. You can't tell if you're in China or America. I'm not being racist. I'm just saying the reality of the situation. And that little pocket right there is very Asian. And that's fine. It's okay. It's okay to want to be in an area where you feel comfortable. Same thing with New York. You get Haitians over here, Jamaicans over here. It's not even really a race thing in New York. It's more about a country of origin. Like I said, Haitians, Jamaicans, Africans, they all have their own little pockets. They kind of intermingle with each other but they still have their own section of the city okay and that's fine that's okay people do prefer to be 
amongst their own people over others. That's a fact. And let's get to the next so-called offensive tweet here. You know America's education system is designed to enable victimization when teachers are forced to learn about institutional racism and prove it's real when it isn't. I literally feel brain cells dying as I read this BS. Sunday morning. Hashtag Sunday morning. Now, I'm looking over here because I have a monitor over here and it's a little bit bigger. You know, I'm doing a two monitor setup and I'm going to read this little portion. Let me see if I got my yeah. See right here where my mouse is. I'm going to read this portion right here to see what it says. It says confronting racism in classrooms. A first step in confronting racism in schools is to realize that racism exists and that if teachers are white, they have benefited from it. This is not an easy process, as discussed earlier in the section on racial identity. We often resist discussion of race and racism because we must eventually confront our own feelings and beliefs. Once teachers believe that discrimination and it goes on. But basically it's saying, look, racism is real. And if you're white, that means you benefit from it. So basically you're a racist. So you got to believe that you got to teach that to your students. And that's pretty much what it is now. How would you feel if you were in that situation to have to read that to your students, knowing it's not real, knowing that you don't believe it? Knowing you're not a racist. You're not the kind of person that would fit into this. But yet, you got to teach it regardless. I mean, how would you feel? It's crazy. And then here's another one that says white privilege. Prove to me that it exists. Show me statistics that prove whites benefit economically solely because of their race. And that is a very good question, because what about places in Europe where there was never any slavery, where there was never any colonization? You're talking about places like Finland. What about even places that were part of the former Soviet Union, Yugoslavia? I mean, these places, a lot of places in uh, southern Europe are very poor. And they're not even really considered first world countries, but they're doing better than places in sub-Saharan Africa, also Southeast Asia. So at a certain point, it's like, OK, what's going on? Why is a place like Thailand in bad shape or better yet, like parts of the Indian subcontinent, uh, Bangladesh? Why are places like that in such bad shape? But you go to Beijing and Shanghai is different. When you go to Tokyo, it's different. When you go to Seoul, South Korea, it's different. Why? Why? And she also says, what does having compassion have to do with the fact that systemic racism and white privilege aren't real? Now, I can't see exactly what this tweet says as far as the part over here where it's, you know, like a quoted picture. All right. And then I guess I guess this person is talking about uh, her and they say this is the person that reaches 10,000 followers. Yeah, I'll stick with my 700 followers who have hearts and compassion <laughs> with an angry face with some hearts. That's funny. We also downloaded the episode of this week's podcast, which you can listen to here. Start at 1.30 for the aforementioned comments. OK, matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a listen. I'm going to put my headphones on and we're going to listen right now and see exactly what's happening. Let me turn my desktop audio on so we can hear nepotism and then before you know it's like it's all them and they're running everything right. and all the curriculum is changing well we have to take those institutions back children is very important communists always knew that they always wanted the minds of children because that is that is the future so if we can have more teachers in those positions that would be great and you know what i do hear from teachers all the time people that are closet red ice listeners and that support <laughs> what we do oh red ice red ice no okay this this ain't the same uh podcast is it because i know who red ice is that's people in sweden Nah, they ain't. <laughs> oh, man. Red ice. Nah, come on. And I think that's fantastic. We need a lot more of that. Oh, I'm absolutely one of them then. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's it's something that, you know, as a teacher, it, it's a tough it's a tough place to be. You know, it doesn't it's not nearly as, you know, bloody as a battlefield, but it's pretty darn close because you're there's just so much animosity and so much bureaucracy surrounding you that you're you're fighting you're on a very steep hill yes and it's it's hard to make your way to the top of it when you're virtually alone you might be incredibly lucky to find someone that's also you know in the same mindset as you but even then it's it's still difficult to be fighting. okay i will put that in the description box below if you want to hear it but i don't want to play the whole thing here um yeah that's pretty real basic you know white stuff it's nothing really that deep it's not like it's racist there's black podcasts that are way worse than that with teachers in it people that work regular jobs and nobody has a problem with it the only reason why it's an issue is because 
it the people are white and this and it evokes some kind of fear. People are scared of white people that talk about being white and liking it. That's what that is. If it was somebody black, then there's no fear because what are you gonna do? You're not gonna do anything. But I digress. The school of Voltage works is overwhelmingly white. In the 2015-2016 school year, nearly 90% of the school students identify as white. Part of the National Center of Education Statistics, only about 4% of the students identify as black and 3% identify as Hispanic. Most of the school students qualify for free or reduced price lunch. So where's the white privilege at? If most of the school qualify for free or reduced lunch, yet 90% of the kids are white, then where's the white privilege at? It doesn't make any sense. But let's keep going. Scott Herbert, executive director of educational services for the Citrus County School District, could not confirm that Dolichov was Volotich, but said the district will be looking into the statement she made, checking the validity to see if they violate our code of ethics and policy. Quote, she does not speak on behalf of Citrus County School District. Herbert said the views she's listed online are really not in line with how our district operates. <laughs> Okay, this is just a random little pop up here on Huffington Post. It says white supremacy won't follow just a few statues. <laughs> white supremacy. What is that? What is that, though? If somebody out there listening to this, you can hear the sound of my voice. You can see me. What is white supremacy? I like to know that. And how does it prevent you from being able to get up every day, brush your teeth, wash your hind parts and get something to eat? You tell me. Tiana Dolachov didn't respond to Huffington Post's request for a comment on Facebook and Twitter on Friday. She has since deleted those social media accounts. Volatich did not respond to HuffPost's message to her school email address on Friday. Earlier this week, the blog Angry White Men, which tracks white nationalism, wrote a post about how someone named Tiana Dolachov had interviewed the prominent white supremacist media figure Lana Loktef. That's from Red Ice. That's what you were just listening to a little earlier. On this week's episode of Unapologetic, Loktef works for the media outfit Red Ice TV, which the SPLC recently designated as a hate group. Now, what makes Red Ice TV a hate group? Explain to me that. Now, hopefully you have ISIS in there as a hate group, people that actually go out there and murder other people for no real reason you tell me that i've not heard about red ice tv engaging in any violence all they do is just talk on a podcast and that's it as far as i know if they do more than talk let me know in the comments below i love to know what they do just beyond having their talk show on the internet in the episode tiana dolichov talked openly about being a public school teacher but didn't reveal her name or the school where she worked Huffington Post found a website promoting the writing of Tiana Dolichov that had a bio section list in the author's home at Crystal City, Florida. Volotich is listed in public school records as residing in Crystal City. She's also listed as being 25 years old. This year, when a fan tweeted at Tiana Dolichov asking how old she is, she responded, she's 25. Okay, we know who she is. It's not like, you know, some big thing. You, you know, investigative journalism, great, but we already know what's going on. The point is, is she guilty of some kind of crime here? And that's what I want to know. What crime did she actually commit? Okay. It's not much more here in this. It's just basically trying to prove that she is who she is. Blah, blah, blah. You know, same old stuff. Oh, here's another tweet. And she says, Islam is responsible because it legitimizes the terrorist behavior and praises his actions. And I guess this is a response to this tweet right here underneath it from a guy named Nathan Lean that says, Islam is not responsible for today's attack at the Port Authority in New York. Muslims are not responsible either. One person, Akayat Yola, is responsible and only he must be blamed for his actions. Generalizing and stereotyping in the wake of these events is unhelpful and wrong. Now, here's my res response to that. Um, when you have a person that acts strictly out of his devotion to his Islamic faith and you see the same pattern happen over and over and over and over again at a certain point when do you say that Islam is responsible when do you say that we need to reform the religion banish it or whatever if you see somebody with a big beard big backpack on you're going to think terror bomb whatever that's just what it is so she's not wrong here everybody knows she's not wrong but for some reason we got to pretend like she is. Here's some more about uh, the young lady. She has gushed about the work by anti-Semitic author Kevin McDonald and has said the JQ is incredibly complex. The JQ stands for the Jewish question, an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that Jewish people have undue influence over the media, banking and politics that must somehow be addressed. That's not necessarily what the JQ is. The JQ is about 
you know, are Jews the cause of problems in the world or are they not? That's just from my point of view. But I guess depending upon who you are and who you talk to, it can be defined differently. And here's another tweet from her. I'm not being patronizing. I'm stating facts. And the JQ is incredibly complex. If you're truly open to exploring it, I'll send you some resources privately. Okie dokie. She has repeatedly praised, defended, and retweeted neo-Nazis and white supremacists, including David Duke, Arthur Jones, Patrick Casey, Mark Collette, and Mike Pinovich, and Mike, a.k.a. Mike Enoch. Uh, I don't know these other guys. I've seen them on Twitter. I don't really know, but David Duke, I mean, what makes David Duke a white supremacist? I don't really know. They say that he used to be in the Klan, but people in the Democrat Party were in the Klan as well. You had Robert Byrd. He was in the Klan, and he was a high-ranking member of the Democratic Party for 50 years. So do we just judge you based on your past, or can we look past that and look at what you're doing right now? Has he hurt anybody? Has he done anything to really impact somebody's life in a negative way? I can't really say that he has. And this is just more stuff about white supremacists, so-called supremacists, leading double lives or what have you. Just real dumb stuff. I guess this is like some kind of um, investigative journalism piece uh, trying to expose this uh, this teacher for being a so-called white supremacist. This is really a big mess. Um, I'm going to say this. I'm not trying to defend Huffington Post, but what I'm going to say is if you are a teacher, you can't be doing stuff like this if you're white. You have to understand this is just what it is. It doesn't really matter if you hide your name because my thing is she didn't want to say her name. She knew what time it was. So you have to really understand the risk of what you're doing. Maybe she took the risk knowing what it would be, knowing that she may get found out one day and she thought it was fine. Maybe she was the person that had to go out here and say what she wanted to say. If you are a teacher in Florida in a mostly white area, I presume you don't need that much money. Maybe she's single. Maybe she's not. I can't really call it, but you're probably not strapped for cash. And I doubt that her podcast is really doing that big to where she was able to make a decent income off of it. And I doubt that it was really necessary for her to do it. But maybe she just wanted to do it because it was like a calling to her. But at the end of the day, as I close uh, this podcast, when I've been able to hear so far, and I'm going to hear more from this podcast, I may put a comment right there in the comment section and pin it to tell you more information about it. But from what I've heard so far, it's pretty uh, just run of the mill stuff, nothing really too major. When I think white supremacists, I'm thinking about the guys that are in the penitentiary with the swastika tattooed on their head, the SS bolts on their neck, guys that have been to jail for actually committing crimes or doing real stuff, just like gangbangers in the black section of it. I look at white supremacists, the real guys in jail, the same way I view gangbangers, but people that are talking about white identitarian, black identitarian, Hispanic identitarian. I look at them more as just identitarians on a political level, not necessarily just haters. I'm not scared of white people or anybody else. I fear no man. I fear nothing on planet earth. I think some people do fear whites and they do fear stuff like this. So then they just try to uh, tar and feather her out of their own fear. But what's to actually fear? I don't know. So what do you think? Do you think that this young lady here is a white supremacist? She deserves to get fired. She should be removed from her post. Do you think that she should have known better than to do something like this because she knows what the risk would be? Do you think she had a noble cause? Have you heard her podcast before? What do you think about it? Is it a good podcast? Is it something that run of the mill, basic stuff? I've heard some of Red Ice TV and that stuff was pretty basic. I'm not saying it's a bad podcast, but I'm just saying that it's not really anything too extravagant, too over the top or nothing like that. I have a feeling that her podcast was the same way. I probably said things in my podcast on my Patreon and also right here on YouTube that were right on the same lines of what she was saying. But I don't think I'll be treated the same way as her because I am black and she is not. But whatever your comments are, Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.